everybody. Hey, Will Robinson, of course, uh, Film Festival Live and FilmFestivalLive.com. I'm looking down here. There's the camera. Uh, FilmFestivalLive.com. Hey, uh, check it out. Hey, we're on YouTube, of course, Film Festival Live. Or you can go to FilmFestivalLive.com if you can't watch the whole show, which is not good for you. You should watch the whole show. Um, check it out on Film Festival Live. We will do a rebroadcast. And it's on our, uh, of course, Facebook Live on mine, Will Roberts something, actor, whatever. Who knows? Just look me up. Um, and it's also on our uh, big Facebook Live channel. We're on Twitch. We're everywhere. And uh, it's Friday. So um, all I have to say about that is... <laughs> it's Friday. Which doesn't mean a hill of beans to anybody that's in the creative world like we are. Because people go like, hey, what are you going to do on the weekend? I'm going to think about what I need to do on Monday so I can be ready for the next week. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Or I'll be editing or I'll be who knows what. Shooting a self-tape while my family is going, what are you doing in there? I have to finish this self-tape. Uh, this show today, I'm very excited. We're going to have a filmmaker on. More than just a filmmaker. She's an award-winning filmmaker, and uh, I'm very excited because I looked into a lot of her stuff. Very awesome. She's in Los Angeles, and uh, lots of great stuff. Okay, here's the deal. I love having interviews like this because, look, obviously this is Film Festival Live, so we're going to interview people from film festivals, from uh, directors to actors, producers to film festival founders, and we're going to talk about the industry. Cool. But that, if you watch my show, you know, it's not really all about that. I like to, like the last show, I had a great conversation because Jim Farmer, who is LGBT, uh, the biggest film festival in the country, if not the world, uh, had a great conversation because, you know, I spent 35 years in musical theater. Da -da -da. Anyway, and with that being said, um, we had a great conversation about the acceptance of, uh, and not being accepted uh, LGBT back in the day when that festival started in 85. I was doing, I started in 81 and that was during the AIDS epidemic and the uh, not being accepted. And so now I get tingles thinking about this, about people uh, of every race, sex, color, creed being accepted and it not being something where you go, oh, well, we better just, uh, you know, accept people. It's actually commonplace now. Although I know there's still issues out there. That's why I have the people on that I have. So I'm going to bring my guest on in a minute, but I'm looking in the green room and she's getting ready to get back in her seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's her in the green room. Technically, you're not supposed to hear me. So if I say something really cool, like, you know, she's really neat. You're going to love this person and everything. It's not supposed to hear me. But it's all good in the hood. Um, I do want to say uh, later on today, there's a good chance that I'm going to have an interview with Timothy. Hold on. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to bring it up. At, oh, why is it telling me that? I'm gonna, Timothy Woodward Jr., uh, Emmy Award winning. And he has got a lot of great stuff. And I got this interview. I've been going back and forth to try to get it. Uh, really quick on the acting front, I'm going to show you something during the day during this broadcast uh because i'm getting a little tired of actors asking me stupid questions about things they should already know for instance the word show business has the word business in it and when people say to me they go like hey i see that you got this thing on your on your instagram and it's cool who who shot it who wrote it who 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 edited it? and i'm like me is, isn't that what you're supposed to do? This is 2021, not 1975. And you should be doing that. We'll get to that later on. But now I'm very excited. And I've been working on pronouncing her name correctly for at least the last 30 seconds. So this should be good. Um, she's amazing, astounding. I want you to watch this. I think you're going to love this. Watch this demo. در واقع 
با کرگی هنا رو ثابت میکنه Burgundy, you are so beautiful. I like the color. I like the two million views. See where you blew up. You also did something that gets a lot of people killed. I'm so excited to have you on the show and watching that. I've watched that demo of that trailer several times, like, wow. And then I realize as you're now sitting in front of me, uh, you're the actor in it too, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that looks like you. Yes. She looks okay. Like well, um, I have to say that, first of all, welcome to the show. And second of all, beautiful work, beautiful work. Thank you so much for having me. And um, hello, everyone. <laughs> We're all here, and I'm sure we might get some questions coming up later on, but I, I want to kind of launch right into it. First of all, you're in Los Angeles. You're originally from? Iran. Where in Iran? Uh, originally, I'm from southern part of Iran, but I've grown up in Tehran, the okay. capital. I spoke to the uh, a film festival there a few weeks ago, and... It's really interesting because one of the first things I want to bring up is, is that in America, and you know this, we have a sort of a preconceived notion about when you say Iran, people are like, oh, duck, and it's all bad. And I was really, I, I knew this, but because I've had, I've traveled the world and I know people that have performed and done different things in Iran. And uh, it's not all that bad, although it does have some interesting you know, ebb and flows in the political uh, standpoint. But can, why did you leave? Why are you here? Was it easy? Give us a little backstory. Well, um, no, uh, I used to live around in different places and live with people, borrow their stories and give them back like movies. This wow. is my job. That's why I'm here. But uh, because I, uh, from my childhood, I uh, was traveling a lot for my parents' job. I started my childhood in the border of Iran and Iraq. Oh. You, you know the, the war between these two countries? Yes. So I started my childhood, the sixth, first year uh, of my life, in the, in, you know, the main part of the war. And then we traveled to other countries, uh, other cities. Um, I started to work um, as an accountant in a very big con uh, company uh, because my first bachelor was economic. Okay. But after a while, I understand that uh, it's not me. It's not me. I, I want to do something else. <laughs> I, started with, <laughs> I started with painting. And, and in my paintings, uh, I had stories. Then I, uh, they understood, no, it's not me again. Then I uh, went for acting. I started with acting. And in the first week of acting classes, I was selected to play uh, in different telefilms, TV series, and this and that. But soon I understood, and I was advised by um, directors that I, I was working with, you are good for storytelling and directing. So I switched immediately wow. and started uh, to uh, study movie directing. I started as a first AD sure. and supervisor for a couple of years and then start uh, making short films. My first short film was an action short film. Oh. <laughs> so for a female, actually I did stunt as well. Uh, for a female director doing this, it, it was something odd in yes. my company. So I, I got recognized soon. And then uh, I start having um, offers from producers to, if you have uh, other stories, bring us, you and, know. Now, was this in Iran or here? No, in, in Iran. In Iran, okay. Actually, I, uh, then I started to uh, make short films. Okay. And my, uh, my second short film uh, was Dance With Me. 
uh, it, it was a very big window in front of me because immediately I invited to different film festivals wow. and I started my journey. Uh, and then for um, for film festivals, as you know, we, we get connections, we go to uh, other place, the other place. And I invited to different places to work, to make films, to make documentaries, wow. to work with them in festivals. That's great. And I, I was invited to, <laughs> to uh, uh, festivals as a jury member or the head of the jury or this or that. Uh, I made a couple short films and t a documentary TV series, which was, which was really uh, odd and hard for a, for a female to work in judicial system of Iran. Uh, it was really hard for me, but they, uh, you know, with the help of my producer, they accepted me and I made the only uh, documentary TV series about um, divorce, uh, about uh, some really odd divorce cases. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the series uh, was in 16, um, episode and it, it was wonderful i guess and um then i uh, i went to iraq the country that we were <laughs> in war with but we loved the people you know and then uh, i stayed in kurdistan part of iraq for a couple months and right. worked there in film festivals then i went to india then i went to other countries and then i awarded this uh, type of green card for extraordinary artists Actually, I'm not extraordinary. Wow, that's good. <laughs> then I came here with a backpack. I didn't know anyone. And that happened to me very fast. So I was not ready to come to this country. Sure. Then I came here and I said, OK, I'm near Hollywood. I want to test myself <laughs> if I can make movies here or not. I started to go around and see what's uh, going on here. What are the connections here? Right. Then a, a festival invited me as a jury. Oh. And my story in this country started from that part. I joined this uh, festival, uh, it, it was in Monrovia. And then uh, I uh, offered them to let me have Iranian film festival attached to them. Wow and uh, they accepted right so i had uh, two years uh, of this wonderful film festival with yep. them i i was able to screen very good iranian movies here in los angeles and then in vegas that's great and i got my connections of course right i made my first short film fermis which was about because i was witness what isis uh, did in iraq sure I was witness. So I made one of those stories that I, that was important for me about a girl who was pregnant uh, of ISIS uh, rape. Yeah. Uh, and what is what she can do for the rest of her life right. and with the baby. Then um, I uh, started uh, studying a master degree in screenwriting at Azusa Pacific University. Yeah. And then I, I made my first feature film in the States, I, the, the one you showed the trailer. Yes. So, okay, let, let's go back. Um, you have a lot of stuff here and that's, I mean, that's amazing. One of the things is, is that when you, when you talk about in the middle where you said, I just came here with a backpack, it, how, how feasible and how easy is it for a woman to, from Iran to go, huh, I'm just gonna get a plane and I'm gonna go to LA. It would seem to me that you would have a lot of difficulty and perhaps even your parents saying, what are you doing? And did you have any backlash on that? Actually, it was really hard for me. It looked easier, <laughs> but when I came here, <laughs> I, understood, I understood it's really hard. Uh, you know, my parents, uh, it was hard for them, uh, but 10 years earlier, they got familiar with me all the time traveling <laughs> into different hard places. Yeah. Like first India. time I went, India. I went to India, 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 tough. India, 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 yeah, yeah. And, and some part of my country, uh, which is, which is not good to go along to, to document something yeah. like a documentary, as, especially as a woman. Yeah, exactly. 
you know, for me, I, 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 I was blessed, but many things happened to me. So my parents was all the time ready to uh, get news that something happened. So <laughs> yeah. uh, when I wanted to come here, they told me, okay, you, you will go and you will come back. We know you, you, you're not going to stay somewhere. Right. Uh, and uh, they tried to find their um, friends from their, uh, you know, childhood. Their friends were here, but it, it was it was so you know fast. Mm -hmm. They didn't have time to arrange anything, and, and me as well. So when I came here, oh, it is a very hard and long story. If I can tell you that many hard and bad situations happened to me. Um, maybe one day I, I am powerful enough to tell that part of the story because something really bad happened to me, um, from, from people, from someone from my country here. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, if, if I could pass that situation, it means that I'm blessed yeah. <laughs> and nothing well, else. Well, so, well, I can see, I mean, honestly, uh, uh, you know, Maddie, I'm, I can see that the the emotion when you talk about that. So I know that we're not. This is not film festival uh, therapy session, but but it it is. I I do believe what you're saying is a very important thing that you can create something that will help blow out the walls of that issue and what happened to you. I, I can tell by your passion and what you do. Um, let me ask you. Uh, Coming here to America, because it sounds like, you know, you talk about everything that happened in Iran and all of the opportunities that you did. I'm blown away that you were able to do what you did there as a woman or in general, because it seems to me that there's such ruling or such an iron fist over what might be able to be done in your country. Um, when you came here, did you get, um, did you have issues with Americans saying, oh, one, you're a woman, two, I mean, you did an action film. Look, I know a ton of directors, women directors I've worked with here in LA and around the, the, around the country, and I'm all for women being the directors instead of men because they're more organized, they're more compassionate, they usually, you know, they're not filled with ego. So was it hard to start doing it here? No, actually, it was super easy for me to start working here because I had the help of wonderful uh, people here. Uh, you know, it, it, it was super easy for me. Wow. Well, I mean, I uh, what, and when, what year did you start? If you don't mind me asking, when did you start? What year? Because you look like you're maybe 20 years old. So oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to know how old you are. That would be extremely rude, but I'm just saying, how long ago did you start? 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Wow. That's great. And you've done so much with your work. Let me ask you, do you have a, a particular genre that you like to do? Do you like uh, action? Do you like romantic comedies? Do you like, uh, I know you do a lot of documentary stuff, so I'm kind of asking you a question that I'll, I kind of know. Uh, do you like uh, uh, driven by um, issues? Do you like, uh, you know, advocacy? What, what's your favorite thing to do? My favorite thing is telling people stories. So when I select a story and I work on this, uh, actually, I, I, I do um, trial, diff different uh, type of uh, storytelling okay. to find my language in this uh, story. Sure. Uh, you know, maybe it's action. Maybe I prefer to cut action scenes out. Maybe I, I prefer to make it, the story as a documentary. It it feel it, it's a feeling, you know. Sure. I, I need to find the language of the film and the genre for right. the film for the, for the idea, you know. And all my stories are real stories, are based on true stories of people. So um, I can change them. It, I I don't have any favorite. Okay. Any, yeah. Um, and um, each time I prefer to find the way I want to tell that story. And uh, even in making that, for example, when I, uh, when I'm writing, when I finish with 
the the basic fundamentals of the story right. then i try to uh, figure if i uh, if i tell it non-linear if okay. i tell it uh, alter, uh, alternative plot types and this and that then i uh, find random people who are not in the cinema and talk to them and talk about the story uh if i see it's attractive for them they are interested in the story and they believe it as a real story then i go for work if if not it's not the story it's not the language then i come back and work on it then i uh, go to different coffee shops and this and that find other people to talk to yeah and, and test it so well it depends on the story I ask that really because if you watch your trailer, you really um, have a blockbuster feel to what you're doing. I mean, I looked at that and I'm like, wow, that's like either a drone shot or it's a crane. I mean, wow, this is like legit. I mean, you look at what you are, are doing and quite honestly, you would never think that you've only been doing this for 10 years. You'd think that you're, you know, a veteran. Um, but it also has a style that is very, um, like I said, it's very blockbuster. It's like big feature. And well, I mean, it is a feature, but the point is, is that that's why I was asking, like, you really have a style that's, it moved quickly. It, it had a blockbuster look. So I was just curious, but I like the fact that you're saying that, well, I don't know. I, I like, well, number one priority, it seems like you like stories, which is great. And you like unique people, which I think is well, because I've traveled around the world. And that was one of the things I did in a one man show is I got to know the people and they became the show as opposed to going, here's a show and this is what I can do. I'm really awesome. Um, so I, I love that part about it. Um, are you currently putting anything in a film festival right now? Yes, I'm working on uh, this Dandelion season movie. Okay. Uh, I started um, the festival journey. I, I'm receiving different um, offers uh, from buyers, but first I want to send this to the different festivals. Then I will make it ready for uh, streamings and screenings. Good. Yeah. Well, and I, I actually, I have other uh, films from my friends that I uh, I distribute indie films and uh, short films from my country for my friends. Wow, that's nice of you. I mean, that's great. Obviously, uh, you probably got that in your education because you do understand, as I said in the beginning of the show, that show business has business in it. So that's good. One thing I did notice in the in the trailer that I really liked is is that I told you that we Americans or people outside of Iran have a, a preconceived notion of what it might be in the people. But what I do love in what you did with the trailer, and I can see that I bet has in the movie, which I'm going to have to see is you see different types of characters and like the guy with the hat that looked like he was an agent and, you know, and you go, Oh, I wonder what he is like. And it looks to me that you're letting us have a, uh, a look into the different types of characters that may exist in Iran and what they do in every day, which is, in my opinion, the best thing that you could possibly do is educate some of us dumb Americans, Americans, Americans. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I am working on the character based stories. You know, for me, a story is first. But characters for me are more important. Uh, and when I am writing these characters, I try to make them as uh, more, more deep as I can. Mm -hmm. And um, characters who I know are actually easier for me. But in this movie, as uh, you mentioned, I had different uh, characters from different countries. The, the guy we had uh, was an Egyptian. Okay. So I had to research about them. I had to go sit with them, uh, go with them to their parties and this and that to understand how are the situations between them and their wives and, yeah. and this. So, and I, and I never tell people what I'm doing because it, it makes them uncomfortable. Of course, yeah. 
uh, in this story it, becomes, it then becomes like you're a reporter and not a filmmaker and i know because i used to be a feature reporter and that's a problem because people go well you're digging why are you digging so i, I get that sorry go on yeah and uh, as you mentioned uh wherever i go in in this big world and i say i'm from iran <laughs> they say oh are you uh, against the terrorists or are you agree oh, with them oh my god this uh, question and uh you know all the time i face with people who are not familiar with uh, us as no. people as ordinary people so i tried uh, to make um real characters in my films you know if if i can make even one person aware of something i do my job Absolutely. you know no, it's i agree with but, you wholeheartedly there yeah yeah but in this film i have some particular beliefs and family relations that i'm against of so it was tricky to work on this film for me as a female director from my country because i'm against of these family relationships and restrictions for for a girl in the family because if you if you are a woman in your family all your lifetime you are restricted and people are ordering you uh and uh, you know it's really hard for for me and for pe for people to understand so i make the situation harder and harder and harder to show the people how it looks to be a female from a society like that i'm not talking about politics i'm not talking about you know, government thing. i'm talking about family relations some traditions that need to change uh, so um it was really tricky for me to work on on that story i don't know if if the movie goes public uh what even my family <laughs> think about that yeah so, that's uh, that, you bring up a really good point and that's what was my next question which you've dovetailed nicely into which is um did you have any issues when you were there in regards to anybody being um violent towards you or like why are you doing this you're you're uncovering things that uh, we don't want you to did you have a i mean here in america go on do it all day long get her done but there did you have issues yeah i'm dealing with some people that uh, they watched the trailer and they they called me they emailed me what are you talking about i said okay can do you let your daughter do this he said, no. I said, okay, you have to let her yeah. <laughs> go her way. Okay. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. So no, and that, and that would, again, we're back to the point where I'm saying that it seems to me that what you did is monumental in your country because, and, and I'm, and I'm totally blown away by the amount of success that you've had just because it seems to me, I used to know a lot of friends that worked in Russia. I knew friends that worked in different parts. I've been to Mumbai and I know honestly how they treat women and it's disgusting. And knowing that being said, I'm totally blown away that you were able to maneuver and um, eloquently, I might add, uh, through that system and now you showed up here. I'm still a little sketchy about the fact that you just got a backpack and you went, I'm going to America. <laughs> but I, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, I think we're glad you're here. Thank you. You know, I started my life with fighting, fighting for everything, fighting for basics uh, for life. Right. And uh, I don't blame my parents, but they, they put their child, the only daughter in a place that was not good for a child. I was witness many hard situation in the war because my mother was a volunteer nurse oh. and my father was uh, an avionic engineer for airplanes oh. so um you know it was hard for it for a little uh, girl to see those situations so i started fighting for myself i didn't know what i'm doing but i started fighting for myself right. and then when i um when i continue my uh way all the time i needed to fight for what i want to do but you know in usually in our families they tell you what to do 
That is why I started uh, my filmmaking journey and artistic journey very late. Uh, 10 years uh, I spent uh, in other jobs. Then I tried my best to find in a very beautiful way with my mom. And, uh, and then I... <laughs> to be an accountant, I just don't see you. Oh, my God, no. You know what? Uh, it, it was really hard for me to deal with these things. My father was okay. Yeah. But the problem was my, <laughs> my mother that, uh, you know, I'm the only daughter and she has so many wishes and desires for me. She tried herself to make me marry someone and have children, you know. So my old life was fighting in a beautiful and calm way that I can. Yeah. So when I go out in the society, I mean, go out of the house. Yeah. It was so easier for me to find a way to do whatever I want. And actually, I was like, I I'm a hard worker. I cannot sit. I, I don't have even one hour uh having nothing in my life you know i, I all, the, all the time working I but uh i was lucky as well i was lucky as well yeah you know many many good situation happened to me when i was in a place that someone was in that place that was a hook for me to let me go to a, a, an upper level in my job wow well, uh, I, I certainly admire your tenacity, and, and I don't, I don't, uh, would never dispute that you seem like you would sit still, uh, just because I know that when people always ask, they go, how many hours a night do you sleep? I went, maybe four, but those are my most creative times, uh, you know, because that's what we do. This is a very difficult uh, business that we do, different, difficult career, difficult passion to be able to to show. The good thing is, is that, and I bet, and here's a question for you. I bet in the last 10 years, you've seen a lot of change. I'm talking about the fact that you can shoot stuff on your iPhones because they're 4K if you want. You can, you can be a storyteller, a content creator, and virtually, you know, do all of it yourself. Do you edit? Yes. Yeah, you edit, you shoot. I mean... You're a, a one woman band and, and that in this industry, let's talk about that. How important do you think it is to be able to have, let's just talk about you writing, directing, shooting, editing. How important is it? Couldn't you just go, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to direct it. I'm going to get someone's script, direct it and, and do that. How essential do you think having these skills are just for your own good of a story? It's essential. Uh, actually, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, learn all the stuff in cinematography, sound, and this and that. But uh, I am trying to know as much as I can mm -hmm. uh, about those stuff as well. Because yes, if I select someone, I trust him or her to do the job. But I need my uh, POV as well. I need mm -hmm. my and so what I'm telling them, if I, if I'm talking to the colorist to do the color correction, I need to talk to him in a technical way, not to tell him in an artistic way, as most of the directors do this. Yeah. That's wrong. Right. It, it, you need to have the sense of what are you doing. About the editing, it's essential. I never edit my films because I believe that editing is the second chance for directing someone else will see your uh, movie your story yeah. in another pov so i never edit my films myself right and in the first draft, i never sit and tell the editor what to do i will come to the editing place after the first draft. but i know editing i can edit other people's movies sure, sure. about the sound I have uh, I have good uh, knowledge of the sounds and other stuff, but you know if it comes to the movie, I never do everything by myself. But I do know about what are they what are they right. doing. I think th I think the most important thing you said uh, that I want to pull out of that, which is essential, and why I asked the question is is that 
you don't have to do it all. And, you know, because a lot of people now will do their own short films or they'll do a feature, whatever, or they'll do a series and they'll be like, oh, I'm the editor. I'm doing all of it. And but what you said is the most important part is, is that I don't do that, but I understand it. Because color correction, if you're like, look, I like this lux, I like this look, I like this feel. I mean, it's better if you can say, if you go up and say, I want it to look like a Hitchcock film. And like, uh, what do you mean? Well, here's one. It's better if you can say, I kind of like this. And you do know technically what's going on. Because, you know, it is your vision. It is your vision. Yeah, and it's fun. It's beautiful to know about all this stuff. I, I'm thirsty to know about different styles, new uh, new equipment, new yeah. cameras, new lenses, everything. I, I know about them. Yeah. And it's really fun for me. Uh, when I was uh, 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 in uh, the first 80, you know, in my country, I, I had the chance to work with the famous uh, directors. But um, I, I remember that when we went uh, on set, he just, one of them, he just knew what he wants dramatically and artistically right. and to be so creative. But when he wanted to talk to us as uh, assistants or when he wanted to talk to the cinematographer, for example, it took a while to explain them and they, they needed to discuss on set. So it's right. time filming. Right. For me, my style, you know, uh, when people um, uh, when people hear about that, for example, my Dance With Me short film, which is a 20 minute short film is two days shooting or silence is one day and a half. They say, oh, what, how? Yes, it happens because I do my homework before shooting. Right. Pre-production. Pre-production. I am super ready. And uh, the crew are super ready. Yeah. And then we shoot. But yeah. sometimes different things happen. Like, for example, in this feature, that was my first feature in uh, the United States. We were, you know, it, it's, it was so confusing. All uh, the crew was from different countries. So different languages on set, you know, different um, movie languages on set and everything. And also I had uh, some difficulties, te technical difficulties. The movie is under two million, so you can understand it's, yeah. it's low budget yeah. movie. You don't need to say anything to me. I get it, yeah. That's, that's a very difficult thing. Let me ask you uh, one more question. And do you mind if I take a small break and we come back, I wanna ask you one more question? Okay, cool. So the question I wanna ask you before I go to this small break is, is that, um, Working with uh, talent in Iran or working with talent here in the United States, can you tell me, is there a difference between actors there and here? Yes, it's really, really, really amazing and wonderful working with actors here. Okay. They are actually, I respect a lot for uh, actors and artists in my country. The rules and uh, you know professional things are different in my country. I know I respect them, but as a director, it's super amazing and fun working with actors. Here. They are really professional. They they know what to do, and they spend whatever they have on yeah. set. I had um, Rudy Youngblood in sure. in my film. Uh, you know he is a superstar actually, and I had a non-actor in front of him from Iran, from my country. It was, uh, this non-actor was a wonderful uh, performer, but it was his uh, first time, you know, and Rudy Youngblood was a super professional. He, you know, I, I did, yes, I didn't have any problem working with him. <laughs> and uh, he, they, they don't bring their personal thing on set. They don't bring their problems on set. They are like a, a very beautiful army come do their job and go. Yeah. It's that, yeah. And that, again, that is, I mean, the downfall of independent films a lot of time, because look, I started in 81 is, is that 
you you couldn't get into the union unless you did so many things and you had to it was very difficult to do now it's a lot easier you can just do a web series on your own on your phone and you can whatever the point is is that um it, actors that uh, really work hard and are career actors uh are the people that you go hey i you got a script you're not babysitting them and and in the independent world sometimes because of budget and because of availability, you have to settle on people that you don't know necessarily whether or not they can do the job. And then they get there and they unfortunately, uh, ex you know, you have to have more time and more money because they don't do their job. So I understand that. Hey, we're going to take a small break. And when we come back, I want to ask you one more question. You don't mind, do you? Good, good. Hey, I'm going to uh, go to a single shot here really quickly. All right. So anyway, let me grab some of these. I drop my glasses. And not that I need to see myself, but uh, so anyway, I hope you're having a good time. I'm really enjoying talking to Medium and, uh, and and we're going to ask her one more question when we get back. But look, uh, I want to talk to the actors. Uh, I talk about this all the time about how you need to market yourselves and how you need to do what you can to get noticed. Because look, in the last uh, couple of years, which has been pretty amazing, as I've been doing this show, meeting a lot of different uh, directors and producers and film festival people, I, I just have realized that, you know, Know the old saying about it's who you know it's not really who you know it's who knows you and in order for you to get that type of situation I think uh, I think Mediam has explained something that was very crucial in our conversation which is basically that she kept doing what she wanted she learned what she needed to she was there professional and got connections through doing that actors you need to learn this is the most important thing because I get so many direct messages from actors going so how do I do this I mean how do I market myself because the industry doesn't let us market them which is true casting directors wouldn't take a call from me going hey how's it going it's will yeah so I want to audition for that thing I bet you do bye bye and they hang up and they never call you back so I came up with some little guerrilla marketing ideas and I recommend you do too so I came up with an ad that I created that looked like a little banner ad that's uh, some furniture and it had a camera it looked like a casting office and it said hey casting directors you want to be successful? Click here. And when they clicked here, this, oh, uh -oh I lost my, my mouse there. Uh, when they clicked it, they saw this. Hey, thanks for clicking the banner. Now, I know you're dying to know what it is that makes a successful casting office or director or production. And the answer is actors. See, you can have a great script, great casting director, a director, producer, but here's the problem. You always need good actors. To be or not to be. But let's face it, there's way too many of us. And we can't market to you. Which is odd considering that they call it show business. And that means that there's business in the show. We can't call you. We can't send you an email. We just submit to the breakdowns like the other 4,800 that submitted to you on that casting call. With no action-packed pitch letter, sales letter. And all we do is stand in line and remain quiet. Let's be honest. Lines are for Starbucks, not for careers. If I still have your attention, I want you to watch this next 46-second video. Now, don't go away, because there's a quiz after this. Detective De Niro, I need to speak with Rex Wilson. Rex is already out there on the speedway for his practice run. You know Now, let me see your shotgun. In here, cool it down. <laughs> Just like your old man, huh? Is there a problem, soldier? I'm asking you a question, Lieutenant. Running in clown shoes. This is gonna be fun. Time! I hope they need more time. <laughs> That wasn't so painful. And I even saw a couple of you laughing. So if you like what you saw, operators are standing by. Yeah, oh, little yeah. Robertson's an great. For sure. Oh, you want to book him? <laughs> That's my agent. And if you didn't like my approach, well, I'm Daniel Craig, and I hope you enjoyed this commercial. So the point is this. Um, I can't tell you this more after being an actor for 40 years of my life, and it's a career, not a hobby, is, is that you really need to kind of get off your ass and do things to further yourself along. Um, my guest has said that. Everybody I have on the show that's successful.
I don't have people who aren't successful on my show. And the reason being is because it needs to breed success. And being able to work with people and wanting the opportunity, because I'm here to tell you, as an actor, as a creator, the only way people want to work with you is if they're confident that you can do the job. So your job as an actor is not just to put pictures of you on Instagram with your sleeve tattoos, your nose rings, and eating food. It, what your job is to make sure that people understand what you want them to see you as, what you want them to, uh, you know, you want to be like, what types of roles you want. If you don't think that you're getting the right types of roles, I got an idea. Write something, shoot something, edit something. And if you can't do that, well, again, you need to either learn it. And this is the best time in the world after doing it as long as I have. This is the best time in the world to be able to do what we do creatively because my studio about 15 years ago would have cost me about $25,000. You're now looking at probably a thousand bucks. Okay. So my Canon 4K, maybe a little bit more, but all this can be done. And if you can't do this, one other thing I want to say as an actor, if you're standing in front of the camera and you're here and you're like, I'll be in my green room eating my MMs, my red M&Ms, and you don't understand what it looks like to be on this side of the camera, I got bad news for you. You're not going to be that much fun to work with. So there it is. Do your work, do your homework. And if not, go to your room. All right, let's go back to my guest. All right, coming back in. All right. So uh, the last question I want to, I, I hope you're enjoying our conversation. Yeah, of course. Good, good. And if you said no, I'd be like, oh, she's gone. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> she's out of here. Uh, last question I want to ask you really has, I mean, we've at, we've talked about everything that you've done, everything you uh, might continue to do and everything that you do well. But I want to ask you a question that I always say is my, it's, it's my free advice to people. Best four-letter word in the English language, free, not the other one. Point is this, what are you passionate about? I, if someone sat with you in a room or you had that 11 second ride up the elevator, your elevator pitch, or, or you, you were talking to someone and you felt that they desperately needed some sort of pearls of wisdom, I don't care if it's industry related, I don't care if it's how to make a, um, you know, a, a donut. I don't care if it's like how to walk across the street safely. What is it that you would say is the thing that you deep down want people to know about you or a pearl of wisdom that you would tell people? The most important for me is, um, we need to have our loneliness as a beautiful place for ourselves. Uh, draw a round circle around ourselves and sit uh, along with us. Find ourselves. This is the most important thing for us. Find ourselves and uh, be in love with ourselves. Be in love with the beautiful soul inside us. Then ask her or he. Uh, what you like more to do what is your passion what is your hate and you know be uh, be truthful and be frankly with ourselves is the most important then we can find the way we have to go and it's the most important thing not to bother anybody uh, in the in this journey but to love everyone in this journey and to give love uh, the universe will give it back to you and the most important thing, you know, when it, it, it may uh, look funny, but when we uh, write stories, I told you, it, characters are really important for me. What is the most important, uh, what is the most important uh, specification for the character sure. to be likable? This is, this is the most important thing for me in my life to be likable for myself and then for the life, for the universe. If if you see a character in a movie struggling and fighting and this and that, but he he or she is not likable, you're done. The movie is done. Right. No one wants to see that movie, or no one wants to sit in a coffee shop in front of you and talk to you. Right. And, and no one in in this universe, even the the small mukos in the water, never like you if you don't like yourself. 
this is my <laughs> no and you know what i just want to say that i think the the most important thing you said there which is extremely difficult to do in our industry which is love yourself i mean that's kind of a difficult thing i spent many years in self-help producing uh, people's shows and so on and talking to people like Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, Shakti Gawain. And one of the things I've learned, you know, as I become older is, is that you really can't even get out of bed if you don't like yourself. And you're right. And the other thing is, is that that translates to uh, how you are perceived, especially in, in this industry. If you're, I, I've interviewed some people that were extremely hateful about the industry and you can tell. And you go, oh, okay, so this person's really upset about their life and what's happened to them. But again, the old lemon out of lemonade, lemon into lemonades and all that fun stuff. But regardless, I am so thrilled to have had you on the show. You can come back anytime you want. Um, and if you have any projects coming up, let us know. We will promote them all we can. Thank you very much, Madam, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Good. Thank you. All right. Hey, uh, I'll let you go. Hang tight in the green room. I just want to say goodbye to you, but let me finish up. Here we go. So everybody, thank you for coming in. By the way, I just noticed that one of my lights went out on this side, and uh, I think I like the lightning better. It's more mysterious. Um, recently, I changed my background because I was like red, and then anyway, I'm just kind of blathering on and on, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the show this uh, week. We had lots of great people. Um, I'm hoping I have my other guest, Timothy Woodward Jr., uh, later on in the show. Uh, check in again. I see that we did have some comments. Um, regardless, I, I hope you have a great day. I hope you're successful. If you want to get a hold of uh, Maddie, uh, I did have her information. I'm bringing you back on a second, okay? Because I forgot to show um, your your information up there, right there. If you want to get her on Instagram, you can see M-A-R-Y-A-M-P-I-R-B-A-N-D. Uh, check her out on Instagram, follow her. She has a website as well, but start at the Instagram. Engage, say hello, don't ask her for a job. And uh, in any case, uh, I, I hope you enjoy your day. Be fun, be successful, but most importantly, be respectful and be a human being. I'll see you next week.